Welcome back to the Operating Room Global Podcast, where representatives of the organization get to dive into the fascinating world of surgery and its impact on global health. Yeah. And today, we're taking a deep dive into something that might surprise you. Mm -mm. Operating room hierarchies. It's not something you think about right away when you're picturing a surgery. Right. But trust me, the dynamics in that room, yeah. they have a huge impact okay. on patient outcomes and the well-being of the entire surgical team. So let's picture that classic operating room scene. Yeah. Tense, focused, everyone in their designated role. Uh -huh. You've got the surgeon at the pop, right. then the anesthesiologist, the nurses, and then kind of various support staff. It's like this perfectly choreographed dance. It is a very choreographed dance. But what happens when someone needs to change steps mid-routine? Right, or like call out. Yeah. Maybe we shouldn't be doing this dance. Exactly, and that's what's so fascinating. Yeah. You would think in such a high-pressure environment, everyone would feel comfortable speaking up right. if they noticed something wasn't right. Like, hey, wait a second, that scalpel doesn't look sterile. Exactly, but the know. reality is those ingrained hierarchies Yeah make people, especially junior staff, hesitant no. to no. voice concerns or challenge decisions, yeah. even when lives are on the line. It's almost counterintuitive, right? It is. It, it's like it, the last thing you'd it, expect. You would think that would be the time that everyone would speak up. Exactly. But they don't. They don't. And so... So what impact can that have? Well, first and foremost, it stifles communication. Right. You're limiting the flow of information, mm -hmm. which can lead to critical oversights. Okay. Imagine a nurse noticing the surgical instruments aren't properly sterilized. Oh, God. A potentially life-threatening situation. Huge. But they're hesitant to speak up because they don't want to question the surgeon, right? It's like almost like they're thinking about their job more than the patient in front of them. It's a really difficult situation yeah. to be in. So There's... what else? I mean, it sounds like it's, it's obviously a communication breakdown. But what other impact can that silence have? It also stifles collaboration. Oh, okay. Let's say a junior resident uh -huh. has this brilliant idea oh, okay. for a less invasive approach, right? but their suggestion gets dismissed just because they're the lowest on the totem pole. Right. And we're not just talking about hurt feelings here. Mm -hmm. We're talking about potentially missing out on innovative solutions. Right, because that person's afraid to speak up. Exactly. Right. And they may have the best idea in the room. Exactly. And now we've missed an opportunity exactly. to help this patient. Absolutely. Wow. So it goes even deeper than that. It does. For the healthcare is... professionals themselves. Yeah. This kind of environment can take a toll. It really can. It yeah. can lead to something called moral distress. I haven't heard that term before. So imagine, you know, something might be wrong. Okay. But you feel powerless to do anything about it. Oh, gosh. It's incredibly disheartening. And over time, it can lead to burnout. Makes sense. Decreased job satisfaction and people leaving the profession. Yeah. So it's a real problem. Wow. So we've talked about communication breakdown. Yeah. We've talked about the impact on the healthcare provider. Right. And all this really does circle back to patient safety. Absolutely. So have there been studies done on this? Yeah. There have been studies showing that operating rooms uh -huh. with a more egalitarian approach, okay. where everyone feels comfortable speaking up, experience yeah. fewer errors and better outcomes. Okay, so it really does affect the patient. It really does. In a very real way. Yeah. It seems like a no-brainer. It does. When everyone feels valued and their voice is heard, the team functions better. Exactly. But the question is, how do we move away from these rigid hierarchies and create a more collaborative and safer environment? Well, there are some fascinating strategies. And we'll get into those right, right after this message from the Operating Room Global. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast for more insights into the world of surgery and global health, and follow us on social media to stay connected. We'll be back in a moment to delve deeper into this crucial topic. So one of the most effective strategies right. for creating a safer, more collaborative OR uh -huh. is fostering a culture of psychological safety psychological safety yeah. it sounds like i know it sounds a little like a therapy session yeah. in the middle of surgery not exactly yeah. but it's about creating an environment where everyone on the surgical team uh, feels safe to speak up okay without fear of judgment or repercussions so like if the anesthesiologist I, right. sees that the surgeon is about to make a mistake they feel comfortable saying exactly hold on a second it's knowing your team has your back 
even if you make a mistake or challenge the status quo. Right. Like, it's okay to speak up because yeah. we're all here for the patient. We are all on the same team. Right. And the patient's well-being is the ultimate goal. So how do we create that kind of atmosphere? Yeah. Especially when we're talking about it is tough. surgery and it's so high pressure. Yeah. I mean, surgeons are known for having very strong personalities. Right. Yeah. And yeah. leadership plays a huge role here. Okay. If the surgeon sets the tone uh -huh. by actively encouraging input from all team members, okay. demonstrating they value everyone's perspective, right. that creates a ripple effect. Okay, so it's really a top-down... It can be, but it doesn't have to be. Okay. You know, ideally, every member of the team right. feels empowered to speak up, Right. but it helps. So the surgeon's leading by example. Exactly. Right. It's about moving away from that my way or the highway mentality yeah. and fostering a sense of shared responsibility. Through the patient. Yeah. For the patient. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So things like regular check-ins and debriefings. Right. Yeah. Can make a big difference. So just taking a moment to kind of... Yeah, just a quick mm -hmm. huddle no, okay. before the procedure make to address any concerns or potential challenges. Okay. And then after, uh -huh. to reflect on what went well, what could be improved. Okay, so just kind of checking in with each other. Exactly. So that everyone's on the same page. Exactly. It normalizes a culture of feedback okay. and continuous improvement. Got it. So what about the hierarchy itself? Yeah. Do we need to completely flatten it to achieve this? That's a good question. Yeah. It doesn't mean getting rid of roles or responsibilities. Okay. You still need someone leading the surgery. Of course. But it's more about fostering a less rigid approach Got it. to authority. So recognizing that even though the surgeon is the lead, yes. everyone on the team has something to contribute. Everyone from the most senior surgeon to the newest resident right. has valuable insights. Got and it. that's what we need to tap into. Okay, so are there any specific examples of how this is being implemented in operating rooms. Yeah, one example that's becoming increasingly popular is the stop the line protocol. Oh, I've never heard of that. So it empowers any team member, uh -huh. regardless of their role, oh, to yeah. pause a procedure wow. if they notice something concerning. Yep. So this could be a piece of equipment malfunctioning, right. a vital sign out of range, okay, or even just a gut feeling that something isn't right. Oh, wow. Okay, so anyone can speak up anyone. and say, hey, something's not right here. And, you know, this is really about yeah. shifting the culture from one of blind obedience to one of shared vigilance. And that's a big deal because before, yes, if you were a nurse or someone who's lower on the totem pole, right. you probably wouldn't feel comfortable speaking up. Exactly. And this empowers them to do so. And what about outside of the operating room? Are there any things that hospitals are doing? Mm. Yeah, another strategy is promoting interprofessional education and team building. Okay, so getting everyone out of that exact yeah. intense environment. Yeah. yeah, so they can interact on a more level playing field. Got it. So by having different specialties trained together, right. you break down those hierarchical barriers. Right. And you foster a sense of mutual respect and understanding. So they understand each other's roles better. Yes. They can gain insights into each other's expertise right. and the contributions that everyone brings to the table. I like that. Which ultimately leads to more effective communication. Makes sense. And collaboration back in the OR. What about simulations? Simulations are incredibly valuable. I mean, it sounds like it would be really helpful for training. They provide a safe space yeah. for teams to practice working together. Right. Okay in realistic scenarios, right. including crisis situations, without the risk of harming a real patient. So they can kind of play out these exact. what, what ifs. Yeah. Exactly. They can experiment with different communication styles, yeah. practice mm. speaking up, yeah. and learn how to respond effectively to challenges as a team. It's like a dress rehearsal. It is. For the real thing. Exactly. <laughs> and it allows everyone to fine tune their communication. And get those nerves out. And build that trust, that yeah. rapport that's yeah. so essential in the OR. And what about outside of a hospital setting? Even? Yeah. Is there well, anything? Yeah. I mean, team building activities okay. can make a world of difference. Even something simple like. Yeah. Even just like a bowling night yeah. or a volunteer project. Right. Can help break down those rigid perceptions of hierarchy oh, and saw... foster a sense of camaraderie and trust. So it's really about building those relationships yes. outside of the work environment. Exactly. That makes sense. It's about building those interpersonal relationships. So we've talked about yeah. leadership. We've yeah, talked about simulations. We've talked mm -hmm. about team building. Uh -huh. What about specific communication techniques yeah. that can help empower people to speak up? So one powerful technique okay. 
is the two challenge rule. Okay, I've never heard of this one. So if a team member notices something potentially risky, uh -huh. they're encouraged to voice their concern at least twice. Well, okay. Especially if they're initially ignored. Okay. So it's not just about voicing a concern and hoping it's heard. Got it. It's about making sure the message gets through. And that the person's actually listening. Exactly, and prompting a response. And what happens if that concern is still ignored? So in that case, yeah. the individual is empowered to escalate the issue okay. to another team member or a designated safety advocate. Got it. So this structured approach ensures that critical safety concerns don't get swept under the rug. Okay, so we've talked about psychological safety. We have. We've talked about flattening hierarchies. Yes. Communication protocols. Yes. Team building. Mm -hmm. There's got to be one more thing, right? <laughs> there is one more crucial element. Okay. Leadership training. Leadership training. So for surgeons. Not just surgeons, for everyone on the team. So the nurses, the anesthesiologists. Everyone. The, everyone. Exactly. Okay. Because by equipping nurses, junior doctors, and other team members, uh -huh with leadership skills. Like what kind of leadership skills? Things like active listening, okay. conflict resolution, yeah. assertive communication. So they feel comfortable speaking up. Exactly. It empowers them to take ownership of patient safety Got it. and contribute to a more collaborative environment. So it's not just about the surgeon being a leader. Right. It's about everyone on the team having those skills. Exactly. It's about distributing leadership throughout the team Interesting. rather than concentrating it at the top. I like that. And by fostering leadership at all levels, you create a culture where everyone feels empowered to speak up, to speak up, to contribute their expertise and advocate for the best possible patient care. This has been really, really interesting. It's fascinating stuff. Yeah. I mean, I feel like it's almost a culture shift. It is a culture shift. It yeah. needs to happen. Yeah. Moving from a culture of silence to a culture of safety. And it sounds like a really daunting task. It can be. But ultimately, yeah, when yeah. you're talking about patient safety and team well-being, yeah. it's really important. It's essential, and hospitals that have embraced this approach yeah. are seeing really positive results. So it's really about moving away from, you know, that the surgeon's the ultimate decision maker oh, oh yeah. and everyone else just kind of falls in line. It's a much more inclusive, yeah. team-based approach. And when you do that, you get better results. The evidence is really compelling. Yeah. Hospitals that have adopted these strategies yeah. are seeing real improvements in patient safety staff morale. That's great. Overall performance. It's a win-win. It's a win for everyone involved. For sure. But ultimately, it's the patients yeah. who benefit the most. At the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Well, this has been a fascinating deep dive. It has been. We've talked about so many things. We've covered a lot of ground. From the potential pitfalls of these rigid hierarchies right. to all these different strategies for creating a more collaborative and safer surgical environment. And, you know, as... Representatives of the Operating Room Global yeah. were really passionate about sharing this knowledge for sure and inspiring positive change in operating rooms all around the world. And I'm sure our listeners, yeah. many of whom are healthcare professionals themselves, Absolutely. are thinking about how these insights can be applied to their own work environments. I hope so. So what would you say to those who are listening and they're inspired, mm. but they feel maybe a little overwhelmed? It can be a daunting task yeah. to try to change this culture. Right. But I would say start small. Right. Pick one or two strategies that resonate with you and your mm. team. Yeah. And focus on implementing those effectively. So it might be something as simple as. Yeah, it could be as simple as instituting regular check-ins, uh -huh. introducing the two challenge rule. Right. The key is to create some momentum. Yeah. Demonstrate that change is possible. Yeah. And you don't have to do it alone. Absolutely not. The Operating Room Global is there to help. We are. And even if you're not in healthcare, right? I think this discussion has been really valuable. I think there are universal lessons here yeah. about teamwork communication. For sure. And creating a culture of safety. And it makes you wonder how these strategies can be applied to other industries as well. Absolutely. Think about aviation firefighting. High-performing sports teams. Exactly. All fields where teamwork yeah. is essential for success. So much to think about. Food for thought. Well, this deep dive has really given us a lot to think about. It has. I want to thank you, our listeners, for joining us. Yeah, thanks for being here. And as a representative of the Operating Room Global, I encourage you to subscribe to our podcast. Yeah, tell your friends and colleagues. Share this information with everyone you know. And let's work together yeah. to make surgery safer for everyone. Thank you for listening. And remember, 
everyone has a role to play. Absolutely. In creating a culture of safety and excellence in healthcare.